Good evening and welcome to an introduction to the Duke of Edinburgh's award. So this is for cadets and young volunteers who are new to the award. We're joined by Jez from the Duke of Edinburgh's award. He's going to give the presentation to you. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Jez and I work for the Duke of Edinburgh's award. I'm what's called an operations officer and one of my uh, most enjoyable roles is I support all participation within the sea cadets uh, you're one of our we call our big five national operating authorities so national youth groups in the same sort of bag as the scouts uh, the girl guides the air cadets and the army cadets and you're up there with the big five and one of uh, our most important uh, organizations that deliver the dv so amy um, has asked me tonight just to do a little presentation for you all about well it's, it's really an introduction to the duke of edinburgh Edinburgh's award for anyone that might be thinking about um, yeah doing their DOV whether it's bronze silver or gold so thanks for joining us all tonight I think we've also got with us this evening uh, Daniel who is a sea cadet and also one of our uh, or one of your ambassadors so at the end available to answer any questions because Daniel is a young person has actually done um, his DOV himself so far better qualified I think than me because I never actually did mine sort of a bit of a confession there that my school or scout group never offered it so I missed out on all of this so I think uh, we said we're going to start at seven it's gone seven o'clock I'm just going to lead you through a bit of a presentation and we'll have an opportunity to either answer some questions sort of a natural break or at the end super and yeah hopefully you can all see my slide I'm going to go for the next one so just a little little bit of background about what is the D of E um, I, I won't I can already spot my first um, typo there because it wasn't introduced in 1556. I'm sure the Duke of Edinburgh is old, but he's not that old. He actually introduced it in 1956. And for those of you that know, he is 100 uh, next year. So if he was born in 1556 or around in 1556, he's doing pretty good. So forget that bit. It was 1956 was introduced and a youth achievement award which is committed to helping young people from all backgrounds to complete unique uh, and personal development program and, and achieve their dv and i've just written there we have a mission uh, i won't read it but it's there and that's our dv mission we also have 10 and i can count i've made sure i've got all 10 there guiding principles for awards and i'll just go through them uh, quickly uh, the awards should be non-competitive so it's not about beating other people or doing better than other people they're non-competitive achievable by all so our awards are open to everyone in the united kingdom it's delivered here in england scotland northern ireland and wales and also up to i always say up to because it fluctuates uh, the dv is delivered in 100 up to 140 countries and territories uh, worldwide so it's not just in the united kingdom but also up to 140 countries and territories worldwide and if you ever get the opportunity to go to a royal palace and celebrate uh, obtaining your gold award uh, the earl of wessex prince edward uh, does all the presentations that's one of his favorite questions to ask people so if you do get there say around 140 and you'll get you got the answer right and he'll be very impressed it's voluntary uh, you can't be made to do it it's something you want to do so if you've heard of this at school or you've heard of it within the sea cadet unit you're you're at uh, it's always a voluntary thing so we don't like people to be automatically enrolled or or mass enrollments we like people to put their hand up and say i want to do it it's all about personal development and awards are personalized so no one should be telling anyone that's doing an award what they should do so occasionally we found schools and the like will say well you're all going to do this for your physical that's not the case so you as sea cadets when you start at a program and we'll talk a little bit more about what you have to do for a program everything you do is personalized it should be balanced and again this will make more sense a bit further into the presentation there are four at bronze and silver and five activities at gold you have to do and we like them to be balanced and the best way of describing that is if a young person has chosen whether it's a boy or a girl's chosen football for maybe they're volunteering we would prefer they don't then choose football for their physical activity and we don't and again they choose it for another activity try and keep it all balanced 
it's progressive. There's a bronze, silver and gold. So if you do start at bronze, we like to think that you'll progress to silver or gold. It's achievement focused. It demands commitment. And by that, I mean awards aren't just um, gained in a week or a month. It, we're talking about six months here or 12 months or even sometimes 18 months. And a young person should demonstrate commitment over that period of time. And that's why awards are so recognised. Uh, especially by industry um, and employers, because if a young person has done a D of E award, they are nationally recognised, internationally recognised, and uh, employers will see that a young person has shown commitment. But most importantly, I say most importantly, we like to think that all uh, of our guiding principles are equally important, but I like to think they're going to be enjoyable. And when I get to meet young people at the Palace who have achieved their goal, and I ask them to describe in one word, what they thought of their award. Uh, the most answer I get back is fun or enjoyable. So the benefits there, just uh, use PowerPoint to make some little pink boxes, but just some of the benefits that not just us, the D of E C about uh, the awards, but also the C cadets and also the larger uh, other youth organisations. And importantly, lots of large corporate employers. And we have a lot of partners, most recently large corporate employers partner of ours is British Airways and their young apprentices are going to do their gold award, British Gas, the post office. So some big company names uh, all get their young staff to do that. In their case, it's their gold award because they tend to be at work and they're, they're that age. But that's the benefits that, that they see and we think we see from our awards. So have a little look. I won't read them all out. Um, I'll maybe Look at the last one. It says leadership and team working skills or the second to last is problem solving and presentation and communications. Uh, you know, they're very important skills for young people to to learn uh, for life ahead, whether it's in the sea cadets or you're applying for work or university. I'll, I'll probably mention it again, but when you start having to think about employing for jobs and CVs, uh, having done your DV or doing your DV is is great for evidence for CVs and interviews. I met a young man at a palace and he now worked for British Aerospace. He'd gone to university, he applied to this job at British Aerospace and the interview panel said to this young man, we see you've done your DV. Tell us about that. And apparently they didn't, didn't ask him any other questions about his university or his education. They just asked him about his DV uh, and he got the job. He's very happy. I'm not saying that happens all the time, but it's just a very good example. So there's just a little, um, some people think the Duke of Edinburgh's award, it just doesn't, isn't done much anymore. And it started in 1956 and it's something that you can't, or isn't really done, or is only done at uh, grammar schools or universities or private schools, but that's far from the case. Uh, the figures there, unfortunately this year, we've had a bit of a dip like everyone, like you, we found that not many p young people have started awards because of the pandemic. But the previous year, uh, we had 295,490 young people start an award and that was up from the previous year. And I think it was our best year ever for young people starting either a bronze, silver or gold award. And also the figure below, we're very, very proud of that. 72,577 were from disadvantaged backgrounds. So it's not just an award for those that go to grammar schools or private schools. It's done in most UK schools. It's done in young offenders institutes, pupil referral centres, youth clubs. Um, and we're always trying to push up that disadvantaged figure. You'll see that most people start a bronze award and as we progress um, the figure does go down and i think the amount of people that start a bronze and go on to receive a gold and actually celebrate at a, a royal palace is about four or five percent of those that start a bronze will go all the way to receive a gold so it's just an example of the commitment that's required and they are challenging awards so not everyone uh, gets to complete a gold not because they're not allowed to. It's just because of the commitment. They just decide the commitment is too much for them. But it's you see that 30,501 in that year achieve their goal. And we like to think that those people uh, will stand them in excellent stead for the future. So more specifically, then, uh, how does the DAV work for you in the Sea Cadets? Apologies for the picture. I just um, I found that on the Internet. It just sits there quite nicely. So I mentioned um, 
there was three levels. Well, there they are. There's a bronze, silver and gold. Now, some of you might have, this might just be second nature to you, but I will go through it um, just in a bit more detail in case anyone's not really sure or doesn't understand. So there's three levels, bronze, silver and gold. And for bronze and silver, there's four activities you have to complete. You have to volunteer, you have to complete a physical activity, you have to learn and develop a skill, and you have to complete a D of E expedition. Now, gold is similar other than it has a fifth and unique uh, extra element, which is the residential. Now, I'll talk about each one individually. I've just put on their um, age requirements. It used to be that bronze, you had to be 14 plus, uh, silver you had to be 15 plus and for gold you had to be 16 plus we have changed that slightly so 14 you have to be 14 in that academic year now i'd imagine most of you are at school or college you'll understand the definition of academic year better than me but it very basically means that if in september next year um people start school and some of them are 13 and some of them are 14 what we didn't want to happen and the same within your units is that those that were 14 could start but their friends and mates who may be slightly younger than them but in the same class they couldn't start but as long as they're all 14 in that academic year now we've changed the rules slightly and 13 year olds can start with 14 year olds and the same rule applies for silver so if you get a group of people all getting together say at September and they want to start but some of their friends in their same group same unit are actually only 14 because they were born slightly later in the academic year they can also start but for gold, it's very simple. If you want to start your D of E gold, you have to be 16. Um, and the way the system works, it won't let you enroll or anyone enroll you unless you're 16 plus. Also, just very briefly, you don't necessarily have to start at bronze. If you're the right age, you could start at silver. And if you're even older, you could go straight to gold. Well, you might start bronze and think, well, I really enjoyed that uh, and skip silver for some reason and go to gold. The one thing you can't do is you can't, if you're 16, achieve your gold, which, which is absolutely fantastic if you do. But you can't then decide, well, actually, I'd like all three. Can I now do my bronze and silver? You can't go down a level. So just a little bit more clarification about um, the five sections. So this is what um, our definition of volunteering is undertaking a service to individuals or the community. And by that, I mean um, it could be a charity. It could be an individual like an elderly neighbor. Cat's just jumped up next to me. Hopefully she's not going to jump on my keyboard or the community. And by that, I mean community based organizations. So that would include the Sea Cadets. So if you had a distinct role within the Sea Cadets and you helped out your adult leaders, that could be classed as volunteering. The physical, much more easy to explain, uh, approving an area of sport, dance or fitness. Skills is developing practical and social skills and personal interests. Expedition, you have to plan and train for the completion of an adventurous journey in the UK or overseas. So most D of E expeditions are foot expeditions, but they can be kayaking, sailing, boating. And as it says there, you don't just have to do it in the UK. If you decided to do all your training and practice, say, on the River Thames or, so, or the Lake District, and then you were doing a kayaking expedition, you could go overseas to France or Spain to do that. There are 20 conditions that all DOV expeditions have to comply to, and they have to be assessed um, and supervised by trained staff. And lots of um, adult leaders within the Sea Cadets are DOV assessors and supervisors but that's why a DV expedition is slightly different to something you might do with your unit or you might do with school you might do with mates very often i get asked well i'm going hiking with my mates at the weekend we're going to camp for a couple of nights with that count unfortunately it won't because they all have to comply to 20 conditions which are very simple it just basically means you need to be trained you need to be prepared you need to be the right age you need to be self-sufficient and they go on like that so sometimes uh, sort of a do-it-yourself expedition does not count and then for gold there's a residential staying away um, away from home so it's a residential experience with other people basically sharing the same experience so you might go on a volunteering holiday during the day but in the evening you'd be expected to stay in the same accommodation and maybe socialize eat drink, play games, quiz, um, and just bond with the other people on that course. And it's five days and four nights. 
can actually be split into two sort of long weekends in 12 months if you can't fit in a whole five days and four nights. But the residential is just for gold. And as I explained in one of the previous slides, less and less people as they progress carry on to gold. But it, I, I'm sure Amy said there was people on the call tonight that would be interested in gold. So have a think about the residential. And expeditions are delivered within the sea cadets. So if I said they can't be like all your mates getting together, uh, as long as they are run, supervised, planned and assessed by adult leaders within the sea cadets and abide by the 20 conditions, they will count. And the same as the residentials, there's lots of activities that you'll do within your sea cadets that will count to a D of E gold. So just a little look at, I mentioned about time scales and how things can take uh, 3, 6, 12 or 18 months. Just to expand upon that. So at bronze, if you were 14 plus or even 15 and thought, well, look, I just really want to see what an award's like. I'd like to do bronze. There's other people in my unit are doing bronze. This is what you have to do. You've got to volunteer, complete a physical, do some skills for three months. Underneath, there's just a little extra caveat there that for one of those, you have to choose to do one for an extra three months. So one's going to be six months. It's your choice. So if you're into your volunteering, you have a role within your sea cadet unit you think will count as volunteering, then choose that. If you're massively into your physical activity, you play sport, you're down the gym, you, you run, you cycle, uh, you even walk or you're, you're going through physio or rehab after an injury and you'd like to choose that for six months, you can. Or if you're great into your skills, it's really up to you. And then for the expedition, a DV bronze expedition is two days and one night. So it's really a weekend away with one night self-sufficient camping. We have relaxed the rules because of uh, the pandemic uh, for all expeditions. I won't go into that too much because we'll be here all night. But originally, most people would camp. But now you don't necessarily have to camp. You could use um, simple self catering accommodation, which might be like a neighboring sea cadet unit. So if you were going to kayak or walk somewhere and you wanted to stay the night in another sea cadets unit, that would be absolutely fine. But that's something. Uh, if you're interested in doing a bronze that I'm sure the staff that helped deliver it can explain further. So silver, same sort of theme now, but you'll see the actual time scales have gone up. Uh, you have to do one for six, the other for six, uh, one for three. The only other extra caveat is if you've not done your bronze, so you're going straight to silver. Uh, the award would just like to see a little bit more commitment or see you demonstrate a little bit more commitment. We'll ask you to do one of your six month sections for 12 months, add on an extra six months. You also notice there that volunteering, you can't choose to do that one for the shorter three months. That's a theme that will appear as a theme in gold as well. And although we like to think all the activities are like equally important, volunteering will always be listed first always seems to appear in red and it's the one section you can't choose for your shorter time. And then now expedition for silver is three days and two nights and there's another little box there it talks about hours of planned activity and for bronze that would have read six and planned activity basically means you have to travel so whether it's you're walking or kayaking for at least half of that seven hours and the other three and a half hours, if you chose, could be towards a project. It could be litter picking. It could be anything you really want for some sort of goal or project. The only rule is you can't do a project for like six and a half hours and only travel for half half an hour. You, the minimum travel must be half of that seven hours. It can be a lot more, but must be minimum of half. And the reason we have that is sometimes it's not always possible to travel for seven hours, especially if you're ex expeditioning either early or late in the year and also because we are open to all not everyone is physically cap capable of doing a travel expedition for seven hours so with people that aren't we like to think we can mix a bit of travel with a bit of project and there we go there's your gold so we've now gone up to 12 months for volunteering minimum and then for physical or skills split between 12 and 6 the same rule about if you're going straight to gold, you've not done silver, you're going to have to choose an extra six months uh, for one of the longer periods. So one of those 12 months is going to turn to 18. And then for expedition, it's now four days and three nights and it's eight hours of planned activity. So at least half of that planned activity will be traveling, whether that's kayaking, cycling, 
Um, I wouldn't say running, not many people do that. Paddleboarding has become quite popular or walking. And just there about the five days and four nights for your residential. And I mentioned that that can be split into like two weekends away over 12 months. And because of the pandemic, people going on residentials has been difficult. People are able to do them. I know within the sea cadets, there's a bit of a ban on overnight stuff. And we are considering how else to deliver a residential. But at the moment, we haven't come up with any firm plans, but I've been told to watch this space. So hopefully I'm not flying through this too quickly and you're all losing the plot, but we'll just move on. So I just popped this slide in. Uh, Steve, unfortunately, can't join us tonight, but he was going to sort of share some of his ideas. But I just wanted to make it sort of clear that if you're doing an activity within your unit already, or you're using an activity in your unit to evidence uh, an internal award or something you're doing within Secret Debt, so there's no reason why that can't double count and count towards your DOV. So for instance, I put on there volunteering, uh, instructing cadets, community events, unit maintenance. If you're doing anything like that or that all makes sense to you, that will count towards your volunteering. So physical, if you sail or you do paddle sports, you do adventure training with your unit, that will count to your DOV. And you don't have to do it specifically for your DOV. If you're working towards an internal award sailing or something like that, uh, and it's a physical activity, that can double count towards your DOV. Skills. Uh, well, I'll put that there, drill, music, marksmanship, catering. Expedition, yeah, can be water or land based. So if your unit is particularly into water based expeditions, I, I live in Windsor, as your Windsor unit is right on the River Thames. My nearest one after that is Staines upon Thames and they're right on the river and I do a lot of river activities. And then residential can be land or offshore sea cadet experiences. I don't know whether a little thing popped up saying I had bad connection was a bit annoying and now I can't progress to the next slide. Um, could you do that for me or have I just totally gone offline? You're still online. We can see it still. I just can't progress to your slides. OK, it's I, doing can it do it. I can do it now. All right, look, this, this, don't worry about too much about this slide. I'll just go back a little bit. Um, if anyone starts the DV, I always try and create for them like a little plan of how a year might look or an 18 months or a 12 months. And I think the reason I put this in here is if you are doing or have done some form of residential within the Sea Cadets, you're planning something, then counts done. If you're doing a physical activity within the Sea Cadets, if you're sailing or you're doing something else, well, then it's done for the DV as well. If you're learning a skill within your Sea Cadet unit, or you're planning to, that's done. If you're going on some sort of expedition with your Sea Cadets and you know that can count uh, as a DV one um, very often, not just your unit, but your district or nationally there'll be or regional expeditions, you can join one of them. There, that's done and volunteering if you're volunteering with your unit and where i said volunteering always appears at the top for some reason i put that one at the bottom but it's still in red then that's done so it's just an example that for some of you you might actually be doing all the things you need to do to evidence a dv unfortunately you've got to have uh, a dv account you've got to be enrolled to do a program for stuff to count you can't uh, enroll and say well look i've been doing all this for the last 12 months. Can I have my award now? You've got to be in it to win it, the sort of thing you can't. It's like having a lottery ticket. You can't tell the national lottery that you guessed all the numbers and they were written down on a bit of paper, but you forgot to buy the ticket. Can I have the money? You've got to have the ticket with the right numbers. Same for your DOV. There's a lot of information on that slide. I was hoping Steve would help me with this, but just to let you know that the DOV is well and truly embedded uh, within the Sea Cadets. And that's a little sort of uh, graph of how I see and Steve sees it's working. At the very top, you are the licensed organisation. The Sea Cadets are licensed by us, the DOV, to deliver um, deliver awards. And at the very top of the pile there, you've got Amy uh, working from your headquarters. And you've also got Steve. I mentioned Steve again. He can't join us tonight. He's the headquarters staff officer for DOV, and he's also our DOV manager. But under Steve, he has um, six 
area support officers or area staff officers. So whichever area you're in, I'm sure you're recognised from the six there. There's somebody else that's uh, designated to lead the DOV in that area. And under that, there's districts and lots of districts have DOV officers. I certainly worked quite closely with Surrey last year and they had a very active uh, DOV lead. And then under that in the green, well, that's the groups. So that's the units. If you're a unit and you wanted to start your DAV or you know it's already done, then that's what we see um, at that level. And that's really the very important level because that's the level where you've got the leaders and the young people actually doing awards. So that's sort of the nuts and bolts of the, the way it looks within the sea cadets. Resources, lots of you will listen to what uh, Amy and I have to say tonight. Um, and then, completely forget what we had to say or think you wished you asked something else. But if you start or you embark on an awards or if you're a young leader and you want to help with help support award delivery and you enroll, then you'll get access to all sorts of different resources. And I've just tried to list nine there. I mean, you'll see YouTube. Anyone can access YouTube. But once you enroll, you're going to get access to our DV magazine, our newsletter, delivery toolkits. The website, which is constantly being changed and added we're, at the moment, we're massively into well-being and mental health and how things like the DOV can support that. Uh, recruitment toolkits, so loads of resources if you're interested and you want to scroll through. And if it works, a bit later on in this presentation, I've just put together um, a silver recruitment toolkit video for you to look at. And bottom right, if that doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever, DOV with a difference is our response to the pandemic. So when we were all told to work from home and everyone went into lockdown, like everyone else, we thought, well, this, this won't last forever. And it seemingly has lasted a lot longer than everyone thought. So we've adapted and we call it DOV with a difference. So if I say there's been a slight relaxation to a rule or some or some of the program rules have changed, that's in response to DOV with a difference. It also takes up a large part of our website um, with lots of ideas how people, if you haven't got any ideas how you can volunteer, how you can volunteer remotely from the comfort of your own home. If you're unable to go to the gym or to a unit, how you can do your physical activity at home or in the garden on your own. So just in the safety of in the knowledge that you'd be safe, still able to do your DOV. There was a time when if you did your Duke of Edinburgh's award, you were just given a little workbook, you work your way through it, you put some stuff in it and your assessor and leader signed it off at the end and you were a certificate and a badge. Of course, we've moved into the 21st century and all uh, progress is now recorded electronically on a system we call eDV. And then last year, I believe, we launched a smartphone app. Um, so young people, and it's only participants, unfortunately, I can't use this app at the moment, so participants can just use their smartphone to track and upload evidence of what they're doing for their leaders and, uh, and eventually someone higher up the chain to approve an award and you can use an app. And I think for a couple of days when we launched our app, it was the second most downloaded app in the United Kingdom, but only for a couple of days. When you do enrol, you still get uh, some paperwork. You still get a gold um, welcome pack, uh, which will looks very much like if you get a gold one, looks like the screens on there, but it's just packed full of information. Uh, if you like something physical to look at and also some information for parents and carers. It used to come with a discount card. Now, if you want to avail yourself to DV shopping and go to some high street uh, discounters, especially for expedition kit and things like that, you can apply for your card via dv.org shopping and you'll get sent a discount card. I think Go Outdoors are our supplier now. And if you use all the potential discount options like our card, you enroll as a member of Go Outdoors, you can get up to about 20% off. It used to be Cotswold, uh, but we've moved to go outdoors because I think they offer a lot more reasonable price products. Further resources, can't ever forget YouTube. Um, don't necessarily look at what those ones are. Needless to say, if you are doing your DAV and you've forgotten how to use something on eDAV, and this presentation tonight isn't really about um, the eDV system. It is 
really easy to use but it's one of those things if you're only logging in like once or twice every six months that muscle memory might not be there to remember what buttons to press but just google it uh, and if you have a leader that can't remember to do something just say just google it because there will be someone somewhere has done a video on how to upload evidence how to approve someone's award it's it's if it's not on youtube it's probably never happened before Okay, so I did mention the video. Um, hopefully this will work. Sometimes they don't. Let's just have a little look. I'm hoping Amy uh, is going to play with sound. But there is subtitles and it's basically music. No one actually talks. So I'm going to hit play and see what we get on. So I'm not sure whether you got the sound there. It was only music. You'll see that's one of our promotional videos. I chose a silver one. I thought it was a nice um, sort of a, a, sort of a bond between a, a bronze and a gold. Uh, you'll see that young man. It's that quite heavily school based. Those um, ideas there. But you see the young man chose football for his physical. He's mentoring somebody else for his volunteering and for skills he was doing cooking. Cooking and baking are actually nationwide our most popular skills that young people do and i suppose my message to you at this point would be that if you are in a unit and you think well there's plenty of things i can do in the unit that would count it doesn't because it's a personalized award you don't have to choose that so if you're massively into your uh, cooking at home and actually i want to use cooking as my dv skill because i want to set myself a bit of a target and improve it you don't have to choose drill or marksmanship or something you're doing at your unit. If you want to do something else, you can. And if you want to mentor someone at your school or college or a neighbor's child, or even one of the rules we've relaxed is you can volunteer within the home and mentor or tutor a younger sibling if that's what you've been helping to do while uh, lots of kids have been homeschooled or learning from home virtually, or even I see in London now, Local authorities are looking to um, send the school children home early before Christmas and to, to learn from home. So, that, so don't when you're thinking of an award, the sky is really the limit. As long as the activity you choose fits into our definition. Um, so, is a phys so when I say that, if you're going to choose physical, it has to be a physical activity. It can't be tiddlywinks. Darts, I don't think, is included. It's got to be something that's that any normal per person would consider to be a physical activity. It doesn't have to be an extreme one, but it just has to be a physical activity. I'll play that again. So, I'm sure, Amy said she was going to give this section 40 minutes, and uh, by my watch, I have 36 minutes of chat, so we're nearly there. And this is really at the end now. So, next steps. So, if you are listening to uh, Amy and myself and think this this does interest me and I've always wanted to do this. Uh, I've just put there some next steps. Now some of them might not count for you because you might say the first one I put there is chat to your unit DV lead and you might say well actually we don't deliver it in my unit so who am I going to talk to? Don't worry about that. Uh, Amy, myself and Steve have thought about that and if you want to start and you don't think you can because your unit currently don't deliver it then please don't worry. We've thought of a a way to make sure you can start. There is a, a process within the C cadets, and this is something that I'm not too involved in, but I know you'll be required to fill out an application form. I'm sure that'll probably have some sort of parental consent. 
there is a small charge to start an award. It's no more than £30. I think for a bronze and silver, it's £23. And for gold, it's 29 And that's just for your place. Other than that, cost wise, it's really the only other guaranteed cost for you and the Sea Cadets would be your expedition. And I'm pretty sure that if you start within the Sea Cadets, you'll be encouraged to do a Sea Cadet expedition and the costs will be very, very reasonable. No more than other sorts of activities you're asked to contribute to. Um, so your local ASO, that's one of our terms. So that's the area staff officer will create your place once in receipt of your application form. And once you've had your E D of E place created, you'll get the link either to your phone or your laptop or your tablet, wherever you choose to use. You can start to think about what you want to do for your programs. You can choose football, you can choose walking, you can choose dance, whatever it is for your physical uh, and the other sections. You just have to let your leader know what you want to do and it's that leader's responsibility to make sure those sort of things will count. I did have a, a scout once for skills and my boss would really be annoyed if I said this but I will tell you for this scout put down for his skill he was going to be an underpant tester. Very funny but it doesn't count and he was asked to remove that. Then once you've done that you get started on your activities and it's all evidence-led so if you're starting to do drill or cooking or whatever it is, or you're volunteering um, at your unit, you'll be expected to either upload photographs, stories, uh, scan documents of qualifications you've achieved, something so somebody can see your progress. And it's also great for you uh, to see how, you know, look back and think, oh, that was great. I remember putting those photographs on there. That's really nice. A little bit of a record book for you. Then once you complete, we like you to celebrate. We always encourage celebration. At bronze and silver that's done internally within the sea cadets when i was helping with in surrey last year they had um, a district awards night so it wasn't just for the dv it was all sorts of uh, qualifications and awards and promotions that young people have achieved but there was also a bit on the dv and then we like to think you're going to progress to the next level unless that is if you've completed your gold because there isn't one for you but i like to think if you've completed your gold and you're getting close to 18 or 18 plus and I'm sure Amy and Steve will agree that um, you just carry on helping to deliver um, the DV. And there we go. That's really uh, the presentation. That's my sort of slant on an introduction to the DV. I did say I was going to stop halfway through to see if anyone had asked any questions, but I didn't. Amy, I'm very sorry. So any questions really? Yeah, no. Thank you very much for that. That's really helpful. Um, down the right hand side of your screen, you should be able to see the questions and answers if you type any questions uh, and we'll read them out and answer them. We have had a couple of questions on the time scales and is it three months minimum um, for bronze on the different sections, which it is, but then you also have to do one section at six months. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so when I talked about time scales and I'll just well, let me hope without going all the way back to that slide for bronze uh, you choose one for um, well let's let's go silver because I know now I'm going to go gold because the one thing I do lead is I, I myself lead people doing their gold so a gold a uh, young person has to choose one section uh, for 12 well two for 12 and one for six and we say they're minimum amounts of time so if you choose your physical to do for 12 months. That's a minimum amount of time you need to do. You need to do a physical activity for 12 months. You could do it for longer if you want, but as far as the award goes, once you've done it for 12 months, um, that's complete. You should be doing and a very good question about time scales is what you actually have to do. Well, you should be doing an hour a week um, towards your physical activity for 12 months. And the same would apply if you're doing physical for three months at bronze or six months at silver. You need to be doing uh, a physical activity for at least a minimum of one hour per week. And that's the same for the volunteering and the skills. Whilst you're working towards those activities or those sections of your award, you should be comm committing an hour a week. So if you are doing something at your unit night and you go to unit night maybe once or twice a week and you are doing something there that you think will count, whether it's volunteering or learning a skill, I'm pretty confident that over a, a course of a week that you're going to um, tick off that hour. 
we don't mind certainly when it gets to silver and gold if you combine your four hours to one four hours four hour activity each month and the reason I say that is mainly around the volunteering. Some people might choose to do volunteering outside of the sea cadets and might go to like an animal sanctuary or somewhere like that where it involves a bit of travel. Uh, soup kitchens are very popular, certainly at gold level when people get a bit older or helping the sort of slightly less advantaged of us. Now it's always better maybe to do that uh, for an evening or a morning or sometimes even during the night once a month and going every week. Charity shops also, not everyone's cup of tea, but if you go to a charity shop and help, absolutely fantastic. And it's probably better to go like once once a month for a morning or an afternoon than turning up just for an hour, going all the way there, arriving at the, your place of um, volunteering and after 59 minutes sort of saying, right, I've got to go now. It doesn't really work for anyone. We have had a question come back from that. If you did okay. 10 hours of physical a week, would you finish sooner? No. <coughs> Sorry, I got to clear. I was going to, Amy, I was going to say that. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't be uh, super clever and uh, knock out um, eight hours of volunteering for seven days on the trot and say, well, look, I've done so many hours. that That's equivalent to what I've done in a year. No, unfortunately, part of the award is about the, um, you got to show commitment. And yes, you can do that if you want. You can do 10 hours in one week, but uh, you still have to do it for the six, 12 or 18 months. And you have to carry on doing it for an hour, at least an hour a week or four hours a month for the for the entire duration of that activity. So you can't smash it all out in a week. Um, yeah, it's a minimum requirement. You can do much more if you want. And it's obviously fantastic, especially volunteering. But it is a minimum requirement. It has to be done for the entire duration. You can have the odd break. So if you're certainly, if you are going to school or college or even leave the Sea Cadets and go to uni and you're doing an award that you think, well, I've got exams, you know, I've got really important stuff. I, I can't be going to the gym every week or I'm going to have to have a break. And we don't mind if for a few weeks you have to miss or you're away or even you're unwell. We accept that. That's fine. No one's going to say you've not completed your award. We probably would say if you haven't done something for over a month, that try and find something else to do uh, in between. Some people at university leave home, so they're at home doing one activity to go to uni, need to do another one. That's absolutely fine. Some people might get injured, can't do a physical activity. Then like rehab, rehabilitation, even if it's just stretches or something like will count for your physical. You know, and DV with a difference is packed with ideas about how to keep everyone's programs um, on the go. So hopefully, Amy, I've answered that question. But the simple answer is no, you can't smash it out if you do more hours in one week and sign it off. It's got to be the three, six, 12 or 18 months. Yeah, so you should be doing one hour a week for each activity. Yeah, yeah. and you don't have to. So if you started at bronze, uh, you don't have to be doing all three at the same time. So you, you don't have to upload a program plan for volunteering physical and skills all at once and think, well, how am I going to do an hour? because you know, that's already three hours a week, you know, uh, an hour on your volunteering, an hour on your physical, an hour on your skills. You can just knock one section out like you're volunteering, then move on to the next. It depends on how quickly you want to progress, how much time you have to spare. Uh, the only other age requirement which I didn't mention was all awards have to be completed by your 25th birthday. So you can't be doing a DOV award. It's a young person's achievement award. Uh, the DOV would say that when you're 25, you're no longer a young person, you're a young adult and all awards should be finished by then. So if you started bronze at 14, you've effectively got, this is my show my age with my maths, you've got, um, you've got 11 years to complete it. But we would never expect anyone who started bronze still to be going. We certainly think anyone that's 23, 24 would have by long since progressed to gold. Yeah, I've got a specific question. So someone likes to do skydiving. Um, as their physical, however, they can't guarantee the airtime each week. So, could they do general fitness, which could help with the skydiving? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yes. Answer is yes. So, I imagine to be a skydiver, you m would need to maintain um, a relative amount of physical fitness. And I can understand. So, you chose gliding is your skill you're not always going to have that chance to be gliding yeah you can sometimes it's the way you write up your awards and if I just bring that back a little bit and a bit more 
because I love skydiving. I don't do it, but it just sounds fantastic. But if someone, say, chose something like rugby for their physical, and I know girls and boys equally play rugby nowadays, choosing rugby, uh, it's, it's a seasonal game, not tended to be played in the summer. So if you chose rugby for a 12 month activity at, at silver or gold, if during that time when the, your club's not meeting, you're not training, it would be perfectly sufficient to say, I'm going to the gym uh, just to maintain my physical fitness or I'm going running or I've got weights at home or something like that. I'm maintaining my physical fitness for my chosen um, sport, f physical activity, which is seasonal based. And that's the same sort of thing as the skydiving. You know, if you can't get that airtime because of the weather or whatever, then as long as you can evidence that you're doing something else to maintain some physical fitness for it, that's absolutely fine. I just brought it back to rugby just bring us all back down to earth so to speak but yeah sounds great <laughs> where would you do that um think... it, the, this one's very relevant at the moment actually so if you choose baking at yeah. home as a skill how is it monitored but i guess that works for any virtual activities yes yeah, so one thing i right very good questions and this is the first time i've done a presentation like this and i always think you should have included a bit more information so for all your activities you will need to find someone, we call them an assessor. So you need to find someone who can assess what you've done. It's a bit like a reference. So if you chose baking for six months and you maybe baked from home, you might think, well, who's gonna, who's gonna actually, because you, it's all evidence-based. And whilst we'd love to just rely on you saying you've done it, unfortunately it doesn't work. You will need somebody, a third person, just to write a few lines at the end of your six months of baking to say, um, you know, William has baked for six months in an hour a day and he's improved from just doing basic cupcakes to I'm just making this up as I go along and I'm going to cough now. <coughs> now doing extravagant sort of French delicatessen bakery, whatever it is. You need to provide someone just to do that. That can be anyone, but it can't be a family member. So it could be a, a neighbour could be you take whatever you bake to a unit night you could take it into school and get someone at school to do it for you um, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that's standing looking over your shoulder as long as you're uploading evidence onto your edv and my daughter is doing her gold uh, i can't be her assessor but i can certainly eat her cakes but a family friend is doing it and she just uploads multiple pictures and stories of what she's done and then the assessor can look at that see the progress uh, she's making and write her report yeah it's called an assessor so for each section so for volunteering physical and skills you'll need to uh, identify someone as your assessor if you get really really stuck your dv leader can do that so you will have a leader whether that's someone in your unit or someone we identify a bit more remote to do that um, because it's all electronic you just upload your progress and someone can assess it sort of um, not virtually, you know, but from a distance. And then when you get to expedition, I, I think I did mention you'd be assessed by a, a DOV expedition assessor who's gone on a course run by us. It's another course like this, but it's, it's for adult leaders that want to be assessors. And there will be a massive network of assessors expedition within the Sea Cadets, Steve uh, being one of them. Maybe I'm not sure whether you are an assessor or not. I am, yeah. There you are. There's, there's two straight away. OK. Yeah, I think the other one is if you're doing running or going for bike rides, then you could record that on the various apps that are about. Yes, definitely. Show definitely. You. I, mean, I, I run something called DV Direct, which is so if you're 18 plus and you want to do your gold and you're not part of the sea cadets or a youth organization or you're at work or uni or even college that don't do it and i very often assess but like amy says if someone cho chose running i'd expect to see some of those strava apps um, stories of what they've done photographs a bit of text sometimes photographs aren't always possible but yeah i, I wouldn't assess somebody remotely and for them just to say i've done it please assess me and say i've done it i would like to see a bit of evidence I see a lot of cakes being baked, a lot of curries being produced. Uh, and I'll, you know, I won't just expect to see the curry on the plate. I'd like to see the preparation and uh, maybe a, a menu choice or even a shopping list, ingredients list. But yeah. But it's sometimes, fun. sorry, go on. Amy. I'll go for it. I, sometimes people think, oh, who am I going to find my, as my assessor? And uh, it's going to be a bit of a barrier. It really isn't. Because it, it can be virtually anyone apart from a family member. So it can't be 
mum, dad, uncle, someone like that, brother, sister. It's got to be someone a little bit more independent. Yeah. Anyone at your unit should be able to do that. Yes, yeah, definitely. Anyone at the unit. Right. The next one, did churches count as a voluntary place? I think that would probably be dependent on what you're doing at church. If you're just attending um, a service, I, yeah, thought, I think exactly, that's voluntary. Yeah. But if, if you're serving or you're, I don't know, helping with the Sunday school, that would probably yeah. be different. Amy's right. Uh, going to church does count because it's a we would class that as a community organization and lots of people do use going to church as they're not just simply going like Amy explained but it's you need to be partaking in a specific role whether you're helping with collections or giving sermons or uh, whatever it is it's got to be a, a specific role you are nominated to do it can't just be you're turning up um, to attend the service and that was the same if you choose to volunteer within the sea cadets you can't just say well i go to my sea cadets once or twice you've got to really have not a, necessarily a title but someone at the sea cadets you've you've got to be doing and i won't start listing what they could possibly be i don't know whether you might have a touch shop or something like that if you're running that so you need to have a role basically and the same would apply to church but yeah very popular uh church or any other place of worship um can be included in your dv and i'd imagine if you're doing that it'd be quite easy to to nominate an assessor who knows what you're doing to write that up next one's about time scale so overall from bronze to gold how long would that take it okay, depends so whether you do them all <laughs> <laughs> i guess because you can yeah. jump you don't have to do, you don't have to do bronze silver then gold no. if you want to just go into gold you could yeah so um you remember when I spoke about gold, I said if you went straight to gold, you'd have to do one of the activities for an extra six months. So it became an 18 month program. That's you. That's really what well, I should have maybe clarified. That's if you haven't done your silver. So if you do your bronze, skip your silver, go to gold. You are seeing as going straight to gold and you would have to do that longer 18 month program to get it down to 12 months. You would have had to have completed your silver. And the same for the bronze to silver. If you go straight to silver, hadn't done your bronze, then it's a slightly longer program. And it's all really an historic thing, I suppose. Just if you are going straight to gold, then the DV don't know you, uh, haven't had that experience of you ev evidencing that commitment during another award, and they'll just expect that little bit extra a commitment to be shown, and they make the award slightly longer. You can backdate a section. I didn't want to get involved in too much of this, but if anyone's thinking out there, what if I'm doing something already? Uh, so if you were to enroll tomorrow and you said, well, I volunteer at my local church, genuine volunteering role, and I've been doing it for the last few months, we can backdate one section up to two months. So we can take that into account, which if you do the maths and you were doing gold and you had to, you were straight to gold and having to do one section for 18 months, and you thought, well, I want to backdate that, then you're see that 18 months will go down to 16 months and it turns into a 16 month program slightly shorter only really really helps people if they're joining you know very late they're 23 and a half 24 and are trying to squeeze in an award before they're 25 and people do that you know they they don't take these opportunities while they're at school or with youth groups like the sea cadets and leave it and realize i wish i'd done that most of the people that really really bite my hand off to do awards are is when i do presentations to parents or businesses and it's the adults who are over 25 want to know what they can do and I said nothing I'm sorry there is nothing for you you should have done it when you had the chance this is a youth award and they get quite upset with me say I'm ageist I, say, I go and speak to the Duke of Edinburgh about that so the next question is about the forms which I'll answer and where you hand it into so if you received an email from me about the resilience fund then you will have an access access to a link for microsoft forms if you can complete that form and i will then get that handed over to steve who is the hqso for duke of edinburgh if you have not received that i'll email everyone who was booked on to attend this evening um, with the form and where you need to submit it to so i will put that in writing for you there uh, airsoft i would say airsoft does count as a physical activity <laughs> It's a bit different, but yeah, on that one. I don't know whether Daniel, whether it would be useful for you to say what the kind of activities that you did within Sea Cadets. 
I'm just going to, someone's at my door. You carry on talking. I'll be back in less than 30 seconds. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about this. Hiya. Um, for, I did a range of activities, some a bit more extreme, some not quite so extreme. For bronze, as a physical, I did indoor green bowls. Not exactly an extreme sport, but it counted. But then for volunteering, I did I try to do something different each time, but something that I was interested in each time. Like I volunteered within the within my sea cadet unit, um, teaching and leading groups of younger cadets. But I've done other things like I volunteered at the National Coast Watch Institute for six months and silver. I did another form of volunteering within sea cadets, but different to what I used at gold. And then physical um, skills. I had a common theme on my skills, which was music, but I did try and do a different aspect. Like I did practical in one section and I worked on theory in another and then did a combined one at the end. Hope that helps. I'm back now, Amy. I think I, I understand that's Daniel. Just sorry, I should have introduced Daniel, but I did tonight at the beginning. Thanks yeah. for that, Daniel. So American football. Yeah. I don't think it matters whether it's contact or non-contact um, if you're doing training for American football. They can be all classed as one physical activity, I would say. That one. Right. Um, can I volunteer in a family business as I wouldn't want to volunteer due to COVID-19 or other, other activities? You can do. Um, shall I answer that, Amy? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, up until the pandemic, you weren't able to volunteer within the family because it has to be for a charity, not for profit organization, or like a community based product. So, unless your family was running a charity, which doesn't sound like this is your the case, no, no unfortunately, not. Now I can understand uh, we get a lot of feedback from young people saying, look, I don't really want to be volunteering somewhere because I am worried about COVID either for myself or bringing it back to the family. You know, we're all told we can't hug granny and granddad at Christmas, but DV with a difference is uh, um, packed full of ideas how you can volunteer, do a physical or a skill, but mainly the volunteering, how you can do it remotely so you can fundraise uh, if you choose to fundraise for an adopted charity and you could do all that on your own or from the comfort of your own home, that would count. There's other opportunities. So without going into loads and loads of detail, dv.org, our opportunity finder pages or DV with a difference. Have a look at it. Uh, there will be examples of opportunities where you can volunteer from home. The one of the most popular is called Missing Maps and it's a way that you help a charity populate or well, populate maps of parts of the, of not just the UK, but worldwide where there isn't sufficient maps for charities to help deliver aid and things like that. And you, they just ask you to complete simple projects and it's apparently really, really interesting. Uh, not done it myself, but a lot of people I support do do it and they're doing that from home. So doing an hour a week or four hours a month on missing maps. I mentioned missing maps. There are other examples. Now, if you wanted to do something virtually like that, uh, absolutely fine. And if Boris Johnson tells us we should all be back to normal by April, you decide I actually would like to get out and about and volunteer, then you can just change your program. So when I we talk about choosing an activity, you can actually change that activity. You used to only change it once. So you could go from, say, missing maps to volunteering face to face, and then you wouldn't be able to change again. But now because of the pandemic, we understand that some people might have to change multiple times. But the only the only relaxation to volunteering within the family is if you're doing something like supporting a sibling. So a younger brother or sister or someone else in your family that's maybe being homeschooled or arranging some sort of sporting events for them. And that was m mainly for when we're all in lockdown, but most kids are back at school now, but still could count. And then at a, even at a push, you might be supporting someone else in the family that might be self isolating or high risk. But it should really be something that's over and above what you'd be expected to do to with a member of your family. So simply doing granddad's shopping or walking auntie's dog. Most people would say, well, that's something 
most families would expect you to do for them. But if you're going over, you think you're going over and above, then just speak to your leader uh, and it could be acceptable. But unfortunately, I, I've not heard of an occasion where you could volunteer for the family business. And I probably so would normally farming. say farming. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say no. I'd, I'd probably want to know what your plan was. And it's all to do with the ethos. Does it meet the ethos of the volunteering section? And without getting my leader's handbook out and reading what that says. But I, I would with that one, if you're keen to start and you, you know who your leader would be, um, have a chat or maybe something we can take up, find out what is you're planning to do on the farm. Um, and then we can chat about chat about this sort of like offline, so to speak, because I, I wouldn't want to say no. Now you said farming it's like throwing up a lo loads of ideas in my head what you could be doing on the farm that would count as volunteering. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. if it's ultimately if it's helping the family business and it's helping the payroll and the, the pounds and pence come in, I think someone would say no. Yeah. For skills at home, what is allowed? I'm guessing playing video games would not count. I don't think I would count video games. <laughs> no, you know what? One day we'll have to. <laughs> but at the moment it doesn't. And people will say to us, you know, I've learned video games and I'll, I, I've just won a million pounds in a competition. Surely that is a, that is a life skill that's going to stand me. That's going to be my job. We haven't quite got that far yet in the DV. We're working on it. We fit the other way around. If you're doing a fitness activity, it can count on your computer console or wherever it is, your PlayStation, your Xbox. But unfortunately, um, gaming is not unless it's changed and someone's not told me with all these things if we haven't answered your question if you go on to dv.org and you go on to the um do your dv there'll be like a loads of pdfs and literally lists and lists of things that would count not things that won't count things that would count for all the activities and all your leaders should be aware of this and what we try and do with that list it's not it's sort of never ending really if someone comes up with a, an activity they've done we've never heard of, like there was um, pimping a lunchbox, which was a like a cooking skill where you would you wouldn't just take a sandwich to school or college, you would pimp it and it would turn into something far more elaborate. And now that's an actual skill, a name, and that's been added as an example. And as things crop up we've never heard of, we'll, we'll add them. But unfortunately, it's just it is really an idea, a bit of a steer. Yeah, completing your driving theory exam and that side of things yeah, or drive, doing your lessons. essential navigation and seamanship online and completing the course, those yeah. kind of things. Are yes, skills. yeah, I mean, driving is a very popular skill for someone who's 17 plus. Um, and, you know, the, the, the theory, passing that, the actual lessons, whether you're doing lessons with your instructor or a family member or a friend. And even once you pass your test, you think, well, I'm, I'm go I chose driving for my six month skill at a certain level, but I was actually really great. And I passed after five months. You know, we all we all carry on learning. I just say young people in those situations is, you know, you're going to you're going to still going to learn for the next you still go out an hour a week say well look, i've been on the motorway or dual carriageway i've done a longer journey I've, done, I've driven at night more just to obtain more experience and the same for lots of things if you're doing like music for a skill and you do an online course and it ends after five months and three weeks and you think well i should be doing for six, six months you don't just stop playing that musical instrument or stop learning that language or stop baking or cooking you carry on uh, just it's uh, it's about how you write it up on your award, what, what you agree with your leader and adding that evidence as you go along for the minimum period of time you need to do. All right, and last question. So someone's son is 13, but he's in year eight. So that will be that you start in year nine. Yeah. To start the award. I am terrible, terrible with academic years and year eights and year nines. I don't know what so it is in Scotland, 13. I'm afraid. Um, that is so if you're 13 and you're starting school and I think the easiest way is if you know you're one of the younger in that class the chances are you will able to you will be able to start if you're 13 and you're like you know that you're one of the oldest in the class then I don't think that rule of being able to join with your peer group will work but if you've and I certainly thinking a long long way back when I started school in sept in my August September I was one of the younger I wasn't going to be um 
same age as them you know, until the April of the following year. So I, I would have been able to do my DV under those circumstances. But the easiest way around that is if you want to do it and you have a leader to discuss it with them or uh, discuss it with us, because it's, it's a computer says no thing. If you give us your date of birth and we try to create an account for you, the, if you, the computer will work out that you're not actually going to be 14 in that academic year. And it, I think it's slightly different for Scotland, slightly different, but not greatly different. Without, so it doesn't, I've sound a bit of a fudge answer there, Amy. Uh, I think if, if that young person knows that they're the, one of the younger people in their class or year group, the chances are they will get in at 13. But then I sh just have to be a bit more patient. But I think you'll be all right. Yeah. And you can start your silver at 14 if you're in year 10 and your yeah. gold in year gold. 11. Even oh, if very simple. You've got to be 16 for gold. You can't be... And you can't start any of your activities or enrol until you're 16. I mean, you might you might better roll at 16 at gold on the literally on your 16th birthday and then say, I've been doing my physical activity for a couple of months. We could take that into account. But you've got to be 16 plus to ha actually start the award, start get that E D of E place. Otherwise, the computer will just say, no, you you, you need to come back when you're 16. Right, well, I think that is all the questions. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. And thank you, Jez from the Duke of Edinburgh for joining us and answering the questions. And if you have any other questions, you have the email that the join instructions were sent from, and I will follow up with an email with the forms and any links that you may want to have a look at. But enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>